Hi, I'm Jonathan here at Martin Lynch and & Sons and welcome to this week's Something for the Weekend. Uh, this week I'm with John, uh, two is okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And uh, this week we're going to have a look at the range of scanners and communications that do some kind of digital mode. Yeah, that's correct. Excellent. Uh, now I'm not the expert on these, I will openly admit that, but fortunately John is our resident expert. So I'm going to ask him all the questions that I've ever wanted to know. Uh, John, let's start with the Uniden. So this is the UBCD 3600 XLT. And let's start, John. Why would I go for this over, let's say, a 125 XLT? This will decode analog as well. And like the 125, it does start from 25 megahertz, whereas communication receivers then you start from HF. So it will decode DMR, Motorola, and digital signals. It won't decode D-star fusion. Uh, but it will decode DMR. Okay, so, so it's very much tailored for the commercially used yes. digital modes. So you say DMR, NXDN? Yes, NXDN. Okay, so that's the, the Unidon uh, 3600, but does it still retain the things like close call and those types of features that I'm used to with, say, the 125? The close call is still with the Unidon. It's uh, Unidon sort of like f uh, signature footprint for close call and receiving the signal, so yes, it does. Perfect. Um, let's move along. So that was the Uniden. Let's move on to the Whistler. So this is the TRX-1, John. And um, what am I getting here over the 3600, for instance? Well, I think you do get a bit more of a, a rugged unit. Um, still the same platform, still uh, goes from 25 megahertz up to uh, gigahertz. And once again, it still does the same decoding of DMR and various other modes. But once again, it won't decode D-Star or Fusion. And would I be right in saying, John, that these actually come pre-programmed? Yes, they do. They come pre-programmed. Once you get them and you go to the Whistler website and you register the unit, it gives you the option to band it for European mode of banding rather than the uh, American banding. Excellent. So moving on to the AOR uh, DV10, John. So uh, we're moving uh, away from the scanners and yes. more into the communication receivers. And, and what is that difference? The difference is... The communication receivers do start from HF and they go f right through to um, the gigahertz range, but they also decode uh, SSB, AM, and obviously digital modes like DMR, uh, Tetra, C4FM, and D-Star. So it, it, they are more of a communication receiver. So I can, I can use this, let's say I'm going on holiday, yes. um, and I want to take a, a handheld communications receiver with me. I could hook this up onto maybe a larger antenna and, and decode, let's say, you know, 20 meter SSB. Yes, you could. It's, it, it, it's that way inclined. Yes, so it's very portable. And obviously, this still does the, the modes like DMR, D Star, and Fusion yes. that, that I'm used to. Yes. Uh, and what's the nice thing about the, the AOR, it was uh, made jointly between AOR and Yesu, so it looks very similar to some of the, the Yesu airband uh, transceivers. Uh, but obviously it marketed under the AOR brand. Uh, nice uh, nice unit, nice and rugged in the hand, I think. And of course, we've got all the accessories. And this particular one, John, is a B-stock one. What does that mean? It's a B-stock, but you know you wouldn't notice if that, you know, this is as new. The only difference is the packaging, the box has had some tape put on it, so it's a bit sticky, uh, but the contents is untouched. The radio is brand new, and it comes with the same warranty as a brand new unit. And you save yourself a bit of money. Perfect, so that's the, uh, the AOR DV10. And uh, finally, um, I suppose top of the line in terms of uh, the handheld communication receivers and scanners is the, the ICOM uh, ICR30, um, which has been around for a couple of years now, John. So tell me a little bit about this and, and why, why I might put my money in towards one of these. This is an interesting handheld. It's a communication receiver. It does scan, not as fast as maybe some of the others. But it does have dual VFO, so on VFO A you could be listening listen to uh, civil aviation, uh, VFO B, marine, or even HF. It will decode SSB, AM, FM, and some DMR, and obviously D style, which is ICOM's digital platform. Okay, so and um, but we're still going to do things like P25, P25, NXDN, yes. those those modes that I'm, I'm, I'm used to yes, as well. So that the, the, the ICOM ICR30, I mean, that is, I remember seeing these at uh, Dayton back in 2017 and thought that it looked absolutely amazing. Uh, nice, clear, easy to read screen when you're out and about it. So, yes. Um, that, that screen doesn't get washed out at all. And as you say, you've also got the ability to program via micro SD card uh, with software on, on your computer. Uh, I think they're a really nice radio, obviously, and uh, two-year warranty with, with ICOM uh, as well. So the, uh, the ICR30, 
Um, so that's the, the sort of handheld options. John. Yes. Let's move down to some of the, the mobile or uh, I suppose base station options. And we'll start with, in the middle, uh, with the uh, TRX2. So what are we right saying, John? This is basically just a TRX1, but in the a The big large brother, box. yes. And obviously it gives uh, the option to have a larger speaker. Obviously with any uh, communication receiver or scanner, there's more circuitry in here. So the stage is slightly better than a handheld. But you know, you could put them side by side and it would be hard to tell the difference, but there is some extra circuitry inside. Okay, so slightly better RF performance, yeah. so slightly better sensitivity, selectivity, things like that, uh, that lead to a better overall experience. Yeah. And still with the TRX2, as with the TRX1, you can uh, download a programming file for them, is that right? Yes, you, and you can configure it to uh, UK banding. Perfect, so that's the, uh, the Whistler TRX2. Uh, uh, let's move across to the uh, AR, AOR ARDV1. So this has been out for a, a number of years now. I remember when these first came out, so probably five years ago or so. Um, and again, much like the, the DV10, but again, better receiver. Better the big brother. The bigger brother again. But uh, with these, DMR, D-Star Fusion. Tetra. Uh, Tetra, uh, so lots of the both amateur and commercial DMR, uh, digital systems. Yes, and, and with these also, it's got auto detect, so depending on what digital mode it's receiving, it'll automatically go into that mode, um, or you can set it for one particular mode and it will only stop on those particular digital modes. Again, but this is a, this is a communication receiver rather than a scanner, so it covers all of HF as well. Yes, it does. Okay, excellent, so that's the, the DV1. Uh, should we touch briefly on one that we haven't got here, the, the AOR 5700? Yeah, 5700 is a very nice communication receiver, and it's a bigger, bigger brother of this radio. And it also offers Tetra, D-Star, DMR, Fusion, um, and it is a professional communication receiver. Excellent. And uh, finally, talking professional communication receiver, the ICR 8600 from Icon. We haven't got it out of the box, but it, uh, it looks very much like that. Um, John, t tell me about the, the RV6600. Why would I put my money into one of these over the DV1, for instance? It follows the 7300, the 9700, the 705. It is an SDR. So for future development, they're still working on R&D. So any updates is very easy to do by a SD card. It has a lovely waterfall and it is a proper communication receiver, HF, right through to the gigahertz bands. Uh, it will decode D-Star uh, and DMR, but it obviously won't decode Fusion or C um, some of the DMR other channels as well. Okay, so, but nice touch screen that we've seen on the 7300, nice color touch screen as well. Uh, and sometimes you can also download uh, from ICOM's website, why well, is it from ICOM, the, um, the remote control software. So if you wanted to use one of these remotely, that's you can nice do so. and easy to do as well. Um, these are fantastic value for money, I think. Again, I remember seeing these at, um, at I think I first saw them at the Newark Ham Fest. Um, a couple of years ago and was very impressed with them and uh, we've got customers who, who absolutely love these. Oh, they, they definitely do. And a number of options available for these as well. The, the speaker, there's the SP39AD, which is a speaker power supply as well, so which we do keep uh, in stock too. Um, so these are also available from stock. John, yes, if you had to pick one that you're taking away, you're, uh, you're buying one today, what are you going to buy? It would be the 8600 because I'm used to the 9000. 9500, the R7000 when they first came out I had one and I still like, as much as it can scan, I still like using the VFO to hunt down and find signals. Yeah, and of course that's one of those things with, with the ICOM is that spectrum scope, you know, being able to see yes, the waterfall. and touch screen. Um, which is something that nothing else here gives you. Not at the box. Not at there the is, box. There is software which you can have that. But okay. it's not a touchscreen, not the 8600. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks very much, John. Of course, John is here uh, every day that we're open. Uh, if you uh, have any questions when it comes to scanners and communication receivers, uh, you can always get him 0345 2300 599. Until next week, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.